All right, so we got those holes drilled out, and we're just figuring out what our C knuckles, bearing knuckles, I don't even know what the spindle knuckles are gonna look like. But uh, as you can see, I got a couple 5 8 holes drilled in some plate here, and I'm gonna cut these uh, corners out, round them off. Then, like I was saying, I was gonna do a C channel around, so this bearing will be in the inside of the C channel, and then up, and then I got a washer here, um, because uh, Maylong's coming up in like a week and whatever, and there's just not enough time to get a thrust washer in which sucks I just can't get it in if I can I hope I can maybe you will see me get one in but for now I'm just gonna be used up a lubed up bear or a lubed up washer I mean sorry but uh, you can kind of get the idea that the C channel is gonna go up here around and in there and then I'll have my spindle off of that so you guys will see as it's coming together but uh yeah sorry I'm uh, very stressed out I don't know if you guys can tell but who knows so much going on did some finish welding on magnum here but uh, you guys can see that in the other video. All right, so we got those holes drilled out and we're just figuring out what our C knuckles, bearing knuckles, I don't even know what the spindle knuckles are gonna look like. But uh, as you can see, I got a couple 5 8 holes drilled in some plate here and I'm gonna cut these uh, corners out, round them off. Then, like I was saying, I was gonna do a C channel around. So this bearing will be in the inside of the C channel and then up and then I got a washer here um, because uh, Maylong's coming up in like a week and whatever and there's just not enough time to get a thrust washer in Which sucks. I just can't get it in if I can I hope I can maybe you will see me get one in but for now I'm just gonna be used up a lubed up bear or a lubed up washer. I mean, sorry But uh, you can kind of get the idea that the C channel is gonna go up here Around and in there and then I'll have my spindle off of that. So you guys will see as it's coming together, but uh Yeah, sorry. I'm uh, very stressed out. I don't know if you guys can tell but who knows so much going on did some finish welding on magnum here but uh you guys can see that in the other video all right so since i'm limited to some supplies in my local stores here i am building this a slight bit different but i think it's for the better so i'm, I'm gonna be using these 5 8 by 40 mil they don't look like these they look like this all right so you can see the idea now that i am running but instead of having these open, I have a treadmill roller pin here that has a, uh, that's been laid out. So you can see my line there. I'm gonna cut two of those off and be welding them on to the bottoms of this so that they'll cut the bearings so that this thing will have no side to side rock play anything. It won't have any play at all, hopefully. But, uh, and then if the bearings ever do get bad, Boom, I can just pop those out and put a new bearing in, unlike the thrust washers where I'll have to get those special ordered. So I am gonna get a couple of those in because I might wanna put those on some of my buddy's rigs here, but for this one, just because I'm, I have access to $5 bearings, I can replace the whole front uh, bearings for $20. That's no problem. So that's the way I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get on the lathe and start lathing up for these little uh, sleeves for the bearings. But as you can see, that's the knuckle solution I've got going on. It's kind of beefy and bulky, but that's just what we do here, honestly. We just want to build things strong, so let's get to it. All right, so we spent the morning doing some lathing, some cutting, some drilling, and uh, here's what we're left with. We got the two uh, C, the C knuckle arms, or tabs, which are these two top pieces. And then I just finished lathing up these pieces, which go over the bearings. If you see inside, I did some internal lathing on those guys so that the bearing get pressed in there just snug. And then I'll weld this piece on top like that so it looks like this. Then I'm gonna have my back plate on the back side of this. It goes down like you guys seen. But I'm gonna get start welding that stuff up and uh, see where this goes. All right, I'm just at the parents I'm doing a little Welding. You can see my Jeep Comanche in the background there. It's got a small block 350. Anyways, doing some welding on the front axle here. Let's get into it here a little bit, show you what happens. But uh took me a while to get the freaking bearings out. I don't have a bearing puller, not that that would really help because they're in C knuckles or C uh, knuckles there. So it took me a while, but I did end up finding a piece of stainless that was just slightly a hair bigger than 5 8 but still fit in the raceway. I was able to pound that in there and then pound the bearing out. So it took a bit, but I got the bearings out, so now I can weld this all without wrecking the bearings. And I'll know for next time 
how to pound the bearings out. <laughs> Let's get to it. Quick tip I always do when I'm fabricating things that are equal on both sides is instead of writing the left and right because you don't know maybe which side's front back, I always get it mixed up sometimes I'm just in a rush. I write X's and O's. So O to O and then uh, X to X so I know that this, this uh, knuckle goes on this side of the axle. So you see, getting in here, doing some welding. So next thing to do is add the top pieces to uh, really cover this in and make it a full knuckle. <laughs> Pretty sweet little system, definitely taking this way too far, but uh, I could go further, but I don't have time. <laughs> Let's do this. Got a nice frosted bearing there. Got some science going on. So I wish this was hot, but it's not. But this is nice and cold, so it's contracted. The ghetto press, because it's hard to press in, but uh, basically, You lay that in there. Drop her down, and then you can throw that in the press. Press that in, not too bad, eh? All right, check that out. So after much efforts and uh, welding and uh, testing, I got a knuckle. So I'm gonna end up welding my spindle off of here. So if this sits on the axle, axle's here pivoting obviously my spindle is going to come off of here and then over so this is my knuckle and then I'll have a spindle as well I'll show you guys the one that's on here all right so right now it only does like slight bit of turning because uh end here it's a nice square so I need to round this off on the end sorry I need to round this off on the end so that uh this unit can actually like steer around the square post. And I'm running my 5 8 bolt through here, all right? So if this sits in here, it's got like no play whatsoever, but just because I own a lathe and I like doing things overboard, I laid down this 5 8 tube bushing and then I'm gonna pound that. That just perfectly slides into there and then goes in and then I'll pound that right into position and then weld it and then I'll cut off the ends here sorry. Oh, sorry I'll cut off these ends like I was saying and then round it over so you can see that's pretty much going in there and then I'll be able to put the bolt right through that'll be a nice tight no moving no nothing so the only other things I have left to do is spindles and then I want to add one little I want to fill this gap in because uh, my whole pivot point's right there. I don't want that trying to pull off the welds, which the welds are pretty strong. I don't think those will break, and I don't think the, anything's going to warp or anything. So, Sweet, let's get to it. All right, so we're making some progress here in the front axle. All right, some knuckles, front axle. So we got that piece welded in all nice and strong, the nice 5 eighths in between now. So this hole is exactly 5 eighths all the way. That's really nice. And then you can see I cut this, cut this all back so now I can steer like a lot. So I have my inch and a half tubing here and I'm gonna cut out half of it so that it sits right on the end like that. And uh, you'll see what that looks like in a minute. Let's do it. All right, check it out. We got some steer tabs on there, spindle arm tabs. We got the whole frame. You can see that tiny little gusset, but the whole frame up front's been welded. You can kind of see these bars I got in. So I'm actually played over all of this to connect it all into one solid, nice looking piece. But until May long, this is how it's going to sit because I don't got time to actually do the plate. And uh, the store that I'm actually supposed to get the plate from, I couldn't get it in for the next couple days. So that kind of sucks. But either way, this is still very strong and I'm still very happy with it. But, uh, sorry, guess what? I found some steering pretty heavy duty too so my girlfriend drives a uh, 1989 uh, GMC tracker and uh, she just replaced some of her steering and it just so happens that her tie rod and her one of her steering rods there or whatever that ends up being pretty damn close so I'll put the steering rod in you can see how it looks so me and Tony are holding this up like yeah this is really heavy duty and that probably should probably would be a pretty decent rod and then we held it up and it just happened to be like the perfect size so 
So I'm like, okay, I'll build some uh, steering arms and we'll see if it actually steers. And uh, I think that speaks for itself. Sorry, this is still needs to get uh, moved up, but I think that uh, that's doing the job very easy. So the next thing tomorrow, so I'm pretty done for the day, is trying to modify this arm up into uh, the steering, which will be somewhere in there. So I'll, I'll definitely have to cut this down, but that's fine. That'll be nice and uh, heavy duty. Up in there and like, holy, let's get to it. All right, so time to actually work on the spindle itself, because all we got is a knuckle sitting at a 90 degrees right now. 90 degrees to the mower, and that's uh, somewhat to the ground 90 degrees. All I need is it to be uh, 90 to the mower. Anyways, so let's build some spindles. What I did is I went and got some 7 8 rod, laid it down, and I'm going to tap the both ends for a bolt for my locking system. And then I got a couple little uh, drop down brackets that will get welded onto the sides there and drop it down to the right height that for ride height they want. So let's talk about the spindles themselves. These look pretty big, eh? 7 8 is upgraded big time. So your normal spindles came on your mower are either a 3 quarter inch uh, spindle or a 5 8 which is both smaller. So I wanted to go bigger but I didn't, 1 inch shafts are pretty hard to get and uh, I wanted to run still stock rims. So I got some rims back there and the original tires so I can get new bearings for those that are 7 8 that will go onto these spindles. So this is just a way more uh, stronger spindle. These shouldn't wear out or anything and I won't have any more e-clips on them like locking ring clips I'll actually have a bolt that locks everything on so let's get to that lots to get done but at least the steering somewhat in there I started working on cutting the steering arm but uh, I got to get this other stuff done uh, the spindle stuff done because I got to go weld that at my dad's house because as you guys seen there he's got the better welder that uh, lays down the beads a lot nicer how are you doing? I'm feeling good. Like, nervous just because, like, time's a ticking. But we got them 7 8 spindles on, which is pretty fucking unreal. Still got some more strengthening up to do. I'm going to put some gusset in just so that these spindles never fucking break. I did end up tapping them too. So, we can throw the bolt in now. Lock down our, our uh, wheel on there. We got the tie rod all lengthened up. on I just cut cut and welded this so that it sits in in the tie rod in the factory location because this guy's tapered like any normal heim joint unit or ball joint and uh, now this is sitting at more of the angle towards my steering arm so that's gonna sit over here so my next thing I gotta do here is I got a mark on here I'm gonna grind this down so I can uh, slide it in there weld that and then this will sit up at my uh, on the mower, uh, the steering part there. This is actually the good one. It's still got some kind of a little bit of grease in there. This one's uh, not this one ain't bad, but I don't know. They came out of that tracker that I was talking about, and uh, it should be pretty good. But the main thing is steering and spindles. Like, oh, that's just so nice. Once this is all greased up, locked down, tightened up. Fuck. Unreal. That's good. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, finishing up. Tuesday in the garage. I'm freaking tired. I don't know if you can see there's a spindle and it steers. Now, I'm not, I don't feel like going into my steering right now, so I'm gonna go eat dinner and like have a nap and I don't even know. Just sit on the couch, drink a lot of beers, smoke some weed. But uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna get right into that steering. I'll show you guys what I did. I used all that Chevy Tracker steering, which is unreal. So heavy duty, so beefy, but uh, let's get, let's get, uh, let's not get to work actually. Let's go get a beer in me, sit on the couch. Check that out. Got the tires, rims again painted. Got the fuck me list here, and damn. Still got a little bit more bracing on the bottom side of the spindles to do, so I'm gonna get that done today. That's actually what I'm gonna look at right now, but I figured I would show you this while it's out, because uh, it is beautiful. This is uh, 
This has the steering on the back side, so I'll flip it over to show you guys that in a second here. But all right, it's flipped over. You can see this giant high rod and steering assembly. So I'm using a center link out of a Chevy tracker. I think it's an 89, and then one of its tie rods. So I cut it and still made it. So my this is now my steering arm. Chevy tie rod is now my steering arm, and it's adjustable. And now I have an upgraded tie rod. So you can see. Welded in some knuckles, or welded, yeah, welded off my knuckles, some uh, braces here for the uh, tie rod to go in. So this is going to sit up in my frame, like so. It actuates on a back and forth. You can see the spindles will move. So super sweet. You can see in here how tight that is. That's nuts. I will never bend this system, literally, unless my mower rolls down a fucking cliff. So, super, super happy with the really sweet setup. Um, I figured I'd let you guys know about this custom. So, if you guys want one of these built or want a custom one built for your uh, mower, hit me up and I'll definitely build you one. Just uh, bring me the mower and tell me what you want and I'll do it. <laughs> I got no issues helping out the mower community, especially uh, we need some more uh, built mowers. If you're uh, watching that Magnum build, it's coming along pretty freaking awesome. We got a couple belts on the table there, so we're gonna get that going. But for me, I obviously don't have a motor still, so it's still in the back there, because I've been getting this done over the week. And uh, it's just so nice to see it like this. So let's get back to this. Let's re brace these uh, spindles up and uh, get this back in there. Back at it, again at the parents' house, using the uh, power make there. A beautiful Jeep Comanche. Roll cage inside. Small block 350, fuel injected. Yada, yada, yada. Anyways, we just finished welding up. Ugh. These spindles turned out pretty good. So, nice and strong. I just have one more little bead to run around the top there, but I had to cool it down with some water just because I don't want it to uh, warp or anything. So. It's looking pretty freaking beefy though. I love it. If you like my Jeep Comanche, uh, subscribe, buy some merch and stuff, and I'll put my one ton axles that I've been building for it under it. Because uh, I've got some one tons for it. I love a good tire pop. I know Riley does. Yeah, me too. Beats listen having less to air compressor. Ha! <laughs> 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 there she blows. Some nice front tires. Good old musty. Woo!